Peace, peace, peace. This is your humble hip-hop international luxury sales coach, Tiger Toledo. And you already know what it is, man. You rock it with the best. You heard? Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. You are tuning in to Tiger Toledo After Dark. Disclaimer. Disclaimer. What you're about to listen to may offend some people. Listener's discretion is advised. I repeat. What you are about to hear may offend some people. Listener's discretion is advised. So, as you guys know, I am your humble sales coach. And I think for you to really understand luxury sales or just sales period and marketing period, you have to look at different aspects of the world, right? And so I decided to make this quick video, but it's packed with a lot of information that you can find helpful. And you probably won't hear a comparison like this anywhere else online, right? So what I learned from high-end hookers, now mind you, I don't pay for no damn hookers, but what where I got this information from, I believe it was a, a special on 2020, right? They were doing a special on 2020. I think it was with Barbara Walters at the time and shit. And they were interviewing high-end prostitutes, right? They were interviewing high-end prostitutes. I mean, these, these hookers were making anywhere from 20 to $50,000 per visit plus retainer every year from one client. And they can span anywhere from mm, five to 10 clients. They didn't have a lot of clients like your average street walker, right? Um, by the way, I understand the street walkers too. I got invited to the Players Ball in Chicago on Chicago Avenue in Lace. What was that? Uh, Shea Players Ball. I, I, I know what the hoes are about. Okay. They love being hoes. But we're going to talk about high end prostitutes and what I learned from them. And if I learn from some prostitutes, you probably can learn from them too. So, as they were interviewing them, right, on this national broadcast channel, ABC, they were asking these high-end prostitutes, how is it that you make this much money? How is it that you can make 150 times more than the average street walker on the street? So they had a, I think it was, you can look it up too. You could pull it up on, uh, on Google. So they asked them and one of the, one of the traits that they were all say is that they would listen to the client. They would listen to the client. They said that sexual exchanges was actually at the very bottom of the list. Sexual exchanges were at the very bottom of the list. They listened to the client. Now, because they were dealing with affluent clients, clients with money, a lot of times they had internal problems. Maybe it was a business deal that was going sideways or, you know, something was going on at home. Instead of your average street walker would be like, all right, look, man, I got, I got clients waiting for me outside. I, I, we need to hurry up and get this done. You got the money? All right. And then they, you know, they do what they do and then they're out of there in 30 minutes. These high end hookers were sitting down and literally almost having therapeutic conversations with these CEOs and vice presidents and COOs, which was amazing to me. Right. So I'm like, the fuck? So they're listening to the clients. Now, another thing that was interesting is that in order to attract those type of clients, they did not do drugs. 
Now, if you've been on this planet more than, you know, 15, 20 years, you would know that a lot of these street walkers are on drugs, heroin, crack, cocaine. So I, so I began to see there was a, a shift in mindset, right? So whatever the client, clients, their high playing clients did not like call girls to do drugs because it was a deterrent for them. They felt it was distracting. They felt like they couldn't trust this person. So boom, that was that, right? So they were listening. They didn't do drugs and they positioned themselves to understand a lifestyle of the affluent. What I mean is this, if you guys see the picture that I have up, it's a uh, piece from Pretty Woman with whatever her name is, I, Julia Roberts and Richard Gere, right? If you guys seen that movie, you guys will remember that he took her to a dinner, right? Uh, at a very plush restaurant. They were having escargot. She did not understand how to eat snail. So she winds up, you know, it, it want the snail winds up slipping out of her hand and then, you know, the the waiter winds up catching it and shit. These high-end hookers in real life train themselves on how to conduct themselves in high-end luxury markets like that in in high-end dinners because some of the times they would have to go out with the client to these functions. So they would understand the market that they were in. And I'm dropping gems for you, but I'm trying to do it in a way where it's, it's illustrated in the story. So they would learn which spoon was the soup spoon, the dinner spoon, the salad fork. They would understand these things. They would understand what were the best wines to order. You know, how to do ballroom dancing. I mean, like these, these high end hookers was off the chain with it. And I'm like, damn, okay. Okay. So I'm listening now, you know, I'm, I'm seeing how they're marketing themselves, how they're marketing their, their products and services. Right. So one of the hookers would say that, you know, as I would listen to my client, sometimes we'll be sitting, you know, on a roof or whatever. And the client would say, you know, I've always wanted to do skydiving, but, you know, I just never had the gall to do it. The hooker would seek out alternatives for the person to overcome that fear. So they went above and beyond to fulfill some adventure in that client's life that the hooker would actually take them to a skydiving place where they would do some training and actually go skydiving with them or, you know, just watch them go skydiving. But it was that type of attentiveness, which made me say, yeah, I can see why she's getting paid $25,000 per visit. Plus the dude is putting her up in a condo. The dude is you know, giving her, I mean, think about it. Your favorite rappers right now, you know how many of your favorite rappers or musical artists have put people through college, paid off their tuition, put them up in homes and stuff like that. Do you realize that? That is, there is a lot of that going on right now, believe it or not. There's a, a lot of high level executive that have women all over the place. And I know some of you women don't even want to hear about that shit, but it's the truth. There are some, and I'm not saying all, I'm saying there are some high level executives out there that have women, other places that they are literally supporting these people's lifestyle. They, they pay for their tuition. They pay for their, their, uh, living expenses. They have them, you know, they're putting reoccurring money in their accounts every month. They're doing a lot for it. They're sending them on trips. They're taking them on trips. So this shit is real. 
So um, going back to the high-end hookers, right? So they would fulfill certain type of adventure in the client's life. They would listen to them with attentiveness and they would fulfill certain, uh, you know, fulfillments and event adventure in the client's life. The next thing that they would do is they would show empathy. They would show empathy to their clients. So let's just say uh, one of the hookers was talking about this, right? She said there was a business merger going on. Uh, and it looked like one of their clients was getting the short end of the stick. So one, one thing that she did, she showed empathy. She was like, I understand you want to keep all your employees. You want, you want to do the best thing for your company, but she offered options and alternatives. Dude, that shit was wild to me because I'm like, these ain't hookers. These are like fucking CEO consultants and shit that just happened to sleep with their clients. This chick was giving this CEO, and of course they didn't reveal no names or anything like that, but they were giving this CEO alternatives and options on how to go about this merger so the so the merger can go more smoothly and the client can come out on top. So she brought a whole dynamic that she couldn't bring, that the CEO couldn't bring to his inner counterparts because they would think his colleagues would think like he's weak or, you know, whatever the case is. So that was like his confidant. If that makes any sense to you. So those are some of the things that I learned from these high-end hookers and, and shout out to you guys, man. I apologize. I, I, I was just going in on this one, but, um, yeah, shout out to Shauna, Mr. Moore. What's up, brother? Akash, Deborah, Ford, AWOL, Paulette. Hello, Paulette. Uh, pick me and Rod. Yeah. So, I just thought that was interesting because at the very end, the very end was the sexual favors. Like, all right, here, now we can, you know, enjoy ourselves and, you know, they have sex or whatever like that, but she has multiple. But if you guys really understand those high end hookers, right? Or, you know, women of the night, whatever the fuck you want to call them, man, it's up to you, man. Magic City ladies. Ask yourself, how are, how is this person able to demand premium dollar, affluent clients, and, de and, and make this type of money when there is like hundreds and thousands and thousands of street walkers out there that are getting $50 for a blowjob, if that and, 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 you know, cautionary, cautionary, this video does have explicit language. So please do not, you know, get alarmed. I'm giving you guys forewarning on that shit early. But I think there's a lot to learn from that. I think there's a lot to learn because when they followed the lifestyle of these high end street walkers, right? Or hookers, whatever you want to call them. I mean, they were, it, it was Chanel bags out the ass, right? Uh, luxury vehicles, grand vacations. They had all of this stuff because they positioned themselves. So ask yourself this, have I positioned my company to attract affluent clients or am I just getting the normal fucking jaywalking street walker to buy all my products. How discerning is my product and services? Am I whoring my business or am I treating my business like the best shit since fucking sliced bread and gray poupon? Ask yourself, how are you positioning your business? Are you listening to the client? Are you talking more than the client? 
Because let me tell you something. Selling, telling is not selling. If you keep flapping your gums, you're not listening to the client because you, you, you're in love with hearing yourself speak. Are you listening to the client? So let, let, let's run this down now. Let's see what we can learn from this high end uh, episode. They listen to their clients. Are you listening to your clients? Are you listening to their concerns? They don't do drugs. Are you fucking intoxicated all the goddamn time? Are you going to meetings and shit smelling like Jack Daniels and Coke the night before knowing that you had a presentation? Huh? Do you reek of marijuana when you're entering, you know, a boardroom? At, you know, this is a, a self-actualization exercise. You have to look inside yourself and say, hey, look, I'm a fucking alcoholic, you know, or whatever the case is. The next is positioning. Am I positioning my company to be respected in an affluent market? Because remember, Business is about margins, not value. Business is about making profits, not selling a bunch of shit and not making no fucking money and you complaining about money all the goddamn time. It's about margins and profits, not value. Are you positioning your company accordingly? Next thing, are you offering a sense of adventure to your client? Meaning if you're listening to your client, are you producing the results that they're looking for? That client wanted to go skydiving. The high-end hooker listened to the client and enrolled the client into some skydiving classes. Eventually, the client went skydiving, loved it, probably you know, upped the ante and gave her even more monetary value. Are you offering your clients, the results that they desperately need. And then are you showing empathy? Do you, do you show that you have a heart, you have a soul or you're just some fucking robot just saying, yeah, uh, swipe here, click here. Do, do you even want to understand the clients? Because again, when you're going towards high end clients, you got to show some type of humanistic fucking approach to it. You can't just, it can't be, you can't treat them like everybody else. If they have a concern, try to put yourself in their shoes. It's only going to make you better, actually. Try to put yourself in the shoes and say, help me understand what you're going through. Help me understand what kind of problems you're going through. And lastly, are you offering advice and alternatives to complex issues. Meaning, does your services or your product enable to solve a problem of the client to a complex issue? The reason why the client is searching for you is because you can solve a problem that they have. Are you offering that? And if you are, if you answered yes to all of this right here, uh, well, no to the drug part, then you should be asking for more. You should be asking for more. So if you're asking for $50 for a product, double up, ask for a hundred. See what happens. See what happens. Ask for a hundred dollars. If you're asking for $500, ask for a thousand. Remember your count is going to get lower. The amount of clients you're going to have is going to be lower, but your profit margins are going to be higher. So you're going to sell less, but make more per sale. So the average cost per sale, you're going to be making way more money. So instead of you having a thousand clients at $10 a pop, you're going to have 10 clients paying you a thousand dollars a pop. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Peace, love, and happiness to you guys. Shout out to all you guys that signed up for uh, my sales and marketing bootcamp. Shauna Marie, um, 
there's another brother that signed up for it. If you guys haven't signed up for it, sign up for it. It is free. It is gratis. I share a lot of great information on how to sell and market your products on a high level. It is free. I'll drop the link below. Peace and love and happiness to you guys. I'll talk to you guys soon. You heard?